Hey, what's up guys, Phil here, and this is a review for the Sup Game 777-in-1 handheld game console. You will receive the game console, instruction manual, mini USB charging cable, and RCA TV out cable. The unit is designed to mimic the Nintendo Game Boy Classic, though it's a bit smaller at 4.5 inches by 3 inches and 1 inch thick. The overall LCD diagonal is 3 inches, but only has a 2 and 3 quarter inch viewable area. On the back is the battery bay, which houses the rechargeable lithium ion 1020 milliamp hour battery, which generally lasts between 3 and 4 hours of gameplay on a full charge. On the front, you have the controls a 4 directional D pad, reset button, A, B, X, and Y buttons and start and select. In the bottom right is a mono speaker. Next to the LCD is a tiny pinhole for the status LED, which is red when the unit is plugged in and charging. It's super tiny, so can be hard to see, but turns off when the unit is fully charged. On top, you have the power switch, mini USB charging port, and headphone out. On the lower left-hand side is the volume adjustment dial, though it doesn't stick out that much, so it's a bit tricky to grip. To charge the unit, plug the mini USB cable into the port at the top and the other end into any powered USB port or portable battery pack. Note that a wall adapter is not included. When you first receive the unit, the screen may look like it has scratches on it. But don't worry, there's a protective film on the front that you can peel off. You can start by loosening it in one corner, then grab it with some tape. Now you can see the screen is scratch free. To turn the unit on, just slide the switch on top. Each time the unit is turned on, you'll be presented with the option to select Chinese or English. Then the game title selection screen appears. This unit comes pre-installed with 777 titles, including Super Mario Bros., Contra, Adventure Island, etc. Note that without the ability to save game progress, you won't see titles like Zelda or Pokemon. Moving the volume dial to the lowest position mutes the audio, while rolling it up increases the volume. You may be surprised to see titles like Plants vs. Zombies and Angry Birds typically considered mobile or desktop games. But you'll soon find that some of the games on this system are simple modified ports of the original and don't exactly have the same gameplay, feel, or mechanics as the original. Plants vs. Zombies, for example. I'm using the D-pad to move the mouse cursor around the screen, but the controls aren't well suited for tower defense building, especially when it comes to grabbing resources and placing defenders. I will say though that I thought the accuracy of the D-pad was okay, and it was even able to recognize diagonal movement pretty well, in addition to up, down, left, and right. The colors and the display are bright, but limited to about 25 colors in the palette. Also, there's no brightness adjustment available if you want to dim the screen, for example, at night. Occasionally, you'll notice a bit of screen tearing along the edges of the screen, or on moving elements due to the limited refresh rate of the LCD. One thing you might be wondering is how two-player mode works as many of the games allow its selection. For this mode, however, you will need a separate mini USB game controller, which plugs into the charging port. If you try to do two-player mode without it, you'll get stuck and have to reset the unit. Since mine didn't come with one, sadly, I won't be able to demonstrate this feature. One thing you might notice is the presence of duplicate games and knockoffs in the titles. For example, Gigabit is just a custom mod of Super Mario, utilizing many of the same graphics and gameplay. If you're wondering how two-button games translate to a four-button system, generally the Y and B keys are the primary buttons, and the X and A buttons are turbo buttons respectively. So if I press B once, I can jump high, but if I hold A, I perform a series of short jumps in quick succession. 
Similarly, if I press Y, I shoot one fireball, but if I hold X, I get rapid fire. Note that the button layout is reversed from Nintendo's Game Boy. One interesting feature is the ability to output the display to RCA using the TV out cable. Simply plug the cable into the headphone port, then into an RCA input, like on a TV or projector. Then you can view the game system on a large screen, which is a lot of fun. It'll even output the sound to your output device. So what you're hearing now is actually the speaker on my projector. And of course, I could route the sound through my sound system or soundbar as well. I also love that there are classic arcade games on here as well, like Pac-Man. So not only do you get emulated games native to handheld systems, you get titles from a whole range of different platforms. One quirk about this unit is that the first 80 or so titles are not in alphabetical order. So after around 90, most things are alphabetical, despite some typos and spelling errors, like any emo block s, and the alphabetical order isn't perfect. While you can page through the titles using the left and right keys, you can't rearrange the order, hide games you don't play, or favorite or shortlist any games. So if you have a favorite game you like to play, be sure to remember its number to find it quickly. Also, certain parts of the D-pad don't register well if you press them a certain way. So for example, when I have the down button pressed in the corner, sometimes the cursor stops moving. This is particularly frustrating in games where timing and precision of key presses matter. The other issue that I have is the smaller form factor isn't exactly ergonomic for me, and hand fatigue is an issue after hours of continuous play. However, for a super inexpensive gaming device, this handheld presents a lot of options, emulates most games fairly well without issue, and is fun to play. You can even double the fun with a friend by getting the second controller for two-player mode, and it comes in several different colors, including red, white, blue, and black. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join me next time.